Now there are a few more WAN technologies which we'll be discussing in this video here about some VSAT technology, VSAT and then some options to connect to internet. Now VSAT stands for word, very small aperture terminal. Now it's a method where you're connecting your routers through satellite connections. You're building a WAN connection over satellite connections where you are going to place some uh, antennas which is going to radiate your signals and then we are building a WAN connection over satellites. Now even service border uh, provide this kind of connections but the major uh, drawback is you know uh, it's it's some it doesn't support high speed data transfer rates now this is generally used where there is no service border is going to offer you a van service or where the population is very small and to justify some exp expensive underwater cabling probably you might be using using this kind of connections to connect those remote locations where uh, there is something uh, cabling cannot be done some remote locations we can say. Now VSAT uses some some kind of uh, device, uh, input device and output device. Probably it, it, it takes some signals in the form of some radio frequency signals. It's going to convert that into your uh, cable signals and then it will connect back again to the router where you are going to build some WAN connection based on the uh, based on through satellite connections. Now we call this as a VSAT kind of connections. Now the other thing we'll be discussing about some of the options to connect to internet. Now probably you know about LAN, WAN, if you're connecting everything, all the companies connect everything, we, we call that as internet where everyone is connected. Where all the enterprises are connecting to service providers and service providers connects to customers and they all connect to each other and you are able to access the resources. Now there are different options which can be used for connecting internet. Like if you want to connect to internet, if you go back in the early days, we used to have some dial-up connections where, uh, where we used to have some um, telephone line which is coming through the landline phone. It's going to connect to my modem and then modem is connecting to my PC again or maybe you may have some inbuilt uh, modem and connecting that RJ11 kind of wire where you can only use any one service at one time and it, it just provides one service on one time you can either make a phone call or you can access internet and hardly it will support somewhere around 56 kbps not very high speed and it's, it's also unstable dial-up connections we use something called dial-up connections and it's really not reliable connection now in today's network we generally don't use these kind of connections so in today's network, most of this dial-up internet connections has been replaced with some broadband technologies which uses the existing DSL or cable connections. That's something what we are going to see here. Now there are two kinds of broadband technologies which we use. Now the broadband is something like, you know, it allows multiple signals to travel on the same, same cable or the same wire. That's what we call as broadband connections, broadband. Baseband means it's, it's only one signal at one time, but broadband allows you to send multiple signals at the same time. Now the existing new technologies, which we use DSL modems or cable modems, they both support broadband technologies, which provides high speed data transfer rates when you compare with the dial up connections. Now the typical DSL subscriber lines, now the major difference between these two is if you're taking any internet connection from any of the telecom operator, so let's say any of the telecom operator, like in India, we have some BSNL or ATL, any of the telecom operator and you're connecting and there is a RJ11 wire which is given by the service border and then that comes with a, with a landline phone also sometimes, you know, there are some service borders here provide landline phone and then it also have some splitter kind of thing which goes and connects to my wireless router and then from there I can share the internet access between my devices. Now, a typical diagram here, I'll show you here. This is what a typical modem here. You got an RJ11 connector from where your telephone line comes. And then these are the LAN ports from where I can access uh, the shared my internet connection. And this is the RJ11 connector. Okay, so DSL uh, providing the internet connection over the existing telecom lines, the same uh, telephone lines which we'll be using here the same phone cable, we'll be using some DSL modem here. And it's, it's using the existing telephone line to send your information. 
they do support some uh, better bandwidth uh, 20 times better dial up connections when you compare with the dial up connections it provides some more than 20 times of better than dial up connections so they use the existing telephone line wiring and it doesn't tie up with your telephone line and in fact they are signal you know telephone line is different and and also your data signal is different now they use some dsl access multiplexer devices to separate your uh, separate your voice and data traffic we call it as ds lam digital dsl access multiplier device which separates and convert your data signal and send sends it to the internet and and also the voice signals into some voice devices and but but when you talk about dsl dsl do support high speed data transfer rates but not as high speed as cable operators now cable modems now there's another way of connecting to internet is if you talk about any cable tv uh, operators now which we use in general they use some black coaxial cable for connecting or providing the cable tv connections to your homes probably the same cable tv cable which is already built for providing the cable tv connections they now also connect to the cable tv company they also connect to internet just like telecom lines you know telecom lines they connect they use the same existing line for providing the internet access over dsl digital subscriber lines now the same thing here they use the same existing coaxial cable or the network which is built to provide your cable tv connections as well as your internet connections okay so mostly these the good thing about this cable tv uh, uh, cable modems is they support much high speed data transfer rates and longer distances when you compare with dsl now dsl has some limitations but this cable tv you can you can just go with very high speed internet connections now typically they they come with some coaxial connectors this is something now uh, earlier it used to come now whereas they do provide some rj45 connectors as well and it comes on this cable modem and then you can share the internet connection in the lan and then you can have some wireless antennas where you can connect your devices to the lan without uh, without a wire now the typical cable tv connections instead of using the telephone line we are using the existing cable tv operators to provide a wan connections 